Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Microsoft Project for Beginners. This is lesson eight and we are going to be covering off the revising and recovery of schedules. But in order to do that, I'm going to give you a little bit of a review on the updating and tracking, a few little tips on the adding of costs of resources that we've covered in previous videos in much more depth. Uh, if you if this is your first video in this playlist, you can always look at my playlist and click on it and see previous videos uh, leading up to this. I've tried to keep it simple so you can recreate this situation on your own file. So I haven't got too many complex uh, activities and relationships. So it should be pretty easy for you to follow along if you want to. Otherwise, you can just watch and figure out what you need to know for your own projects. So in this particular video, I've just, uh, or project, I've just set up a task one to seven, just call them those simple names, put finish. And I have one called summary task and summary task is quite simply just the heading. So if you want to recreate that, you could, you know, by just typing these in uh, and then clicking below the summary task, indenting and putting in these durations here. And if you put in these predecessors, there's this vertical bar, you can move this left or right. And this is just a quick rehash. Don't worry, I'll get into the updating and tracking soon enough. You've got uh, these predecessors, you type those in, you should be good to go. You could always put in your own date, which would be the current date. Uh, I think I've got February 17th, 2022 here, which is already in the past, but that's okay. Uh, if you wanted to change the date, very easy. You go to the project tab, project information, and you could put whatever date uh, you want in there, right? All right, so I'll leave that at that for now. And you see these resources. So this is actually a resource and cost loaded schedule that we're updating and revising. So we should be able to see because I've got resources and costs added to it, we should be able to see what our total costs are. And then when we revise it, we should be able to see how it's changed. So if I actually slide on this square icon box, and this is how I move between screens, I click on this square icon box, I right click, and I'm going to go to cost screen, you can see I have not saved a baseline or set a baseline yet. I do have costs that are added. So right now we've got $61,840 of costs added to this project. We did that by, if I slide to the left and I go to the resource sheet, by creating this very simple resource sheet, you could freeze this at this point and just try to copy this into your project if you wanted to. Uh, I've got site super PM, drywall sub, plumber, uh, drywall supplier, square feet, laborers, uh, I put in some costs and some rates on these items so you can see uh, I've got $100 an hour for the site super, the PM. I put drywall supplier as a material because you've got three types to choose from. And if you want more information on this, you, again, go to my playlist or go in the description below and you'll see a listing of the other videos up to this point. I have a lot of videos on my YouTube channel. You can subscribe and again, see under the different playlists. But we have work, uh, which means hourly rates. We have costs, which means we'll add costs later. And we've got material, which is something measurable like drywall per square foot as an example. Okay, so I'm gonna slide to the left here and I'm gonna go back to my Gantt chart. And so maybe I'll just add another couple of resources here. I don't think they're all added to everything yet. So I think we could add something to task three. Because I created those resources, I can go to the resource tab, assign resources, and maybe I'm gonna assign, let's say the plumber uh, to this task three, and I'm gonna say $10,000. So I'll just type in $10,000. And what that means is that we're gonna pay the plumber $10,000 when they finish this activity. Well, let's see, is it when they finish them? So let's see, I've got plumber. I'm gonna to slide to the left again, getting you used to switching screens, very important in using Microsoft Project. Resource sheet and plumber. Yes, I'm gonna pay them at the end. When they finish that task, I'll pay them 10,000. I won't pay them as they're doing it and I'm not gonna pay them. I have a choice at the start. I'm gonna pay them at the end. That's very typical in projects. So I'm gonna again, slide to the left. Oops, just click here, slide to the left. 
and go back to my Gantt chart. And when I slide to the left, I right click my mouse or the tab on your laptop if that's what you're using. And I can see I've got these costs and now it's including that 10,000 that we just added there. Uh, so it's pretty easy to add uh, resources in Microsoft Project, assign resources. Uh, that was for a resource that was going to be um, a cost value. I've added drywall as an example by the square foot and drywall sub. Uh, we've added, uh, well, let's add maybe another one here, laborers. So I'm going to add uh, laborers, just one, maybe two laborers. And we'll see if this turns red or not. Let's go assign. We've got two laborers. No, we're good. Uh, $6,400. So it's charging an hourly rate based on how long this activity is. And it's come up with $6,400. So that's, again, based on what we were paying the labor per hour, which was $80 an hour. And slide back to the left. Getting used to switching screens. Go back to the Gantt chart. You can always slow it down, play it back if I'm going too fast. $6,400. If I go to my entry screen by clicking the square icon box, I can see, all right, so that's five days, five times eight times 80. That should give me my $6,400 if you multiply those out. Eight hour days, $80 an hour, eight times 80. That's, I think, going to give you that uh, number times five, 6,400. Okay, so now we know our costs. Great. So this was in the previous two videos that I did was the tracking and updating process now uh, because today we're going to get into recovery. Uh, so we're going to focus in on that. But again, if you want the very slow version of tracking and recovery, go back to the previous pre two videos uh, and you'll get all the stuff you need to know about that information. But let's just give a quick review here. We have to set a baseline. So there's no baseline set here. Uh, what's going to happen is when we set the baseline, it's going to copy these costs over here. So I'm going to very quickly, I'm going to go to project, set baseline, just showing you the fundamentals in this video, set baseline for the entire project. And what it's going to do is it's going to copy all of my time periods and all of my costs, and it's going to remember them. It's actually 14 columns, I believe, that it remembers. Uh, the information on and that's great because then when you update things you'll be able to see what the variances are and you know you haven't set a baseline if like the costs are showing zero uh, i'll show you another place that you can see this you click on the square icon box there's another table called variance and this is very useful for when we are going to be recovering this schedule and revising this schedule uh, is we can see there's no baseline here either so when i go set baseline I'm going to set baseline for the entire project. It's going to copy all the information from this column and paste it there, all the information from this column and paste it there. All right, so there it is. Now we've got a baseline set. Now when we change stuff, it'll show us the difference is in time. You know, if we start a day late, we finish two or three days late, it'll tell us that. And cost. If we add more costs or something takes longer and it's got a variable cost like hourly rate assigned to it, it'll make adjustments so we'll be able to see the variances. Right. So what we want to do now is update this and get us, we're going to get ourselves into a little bit of problems and then we'll look at revising it. So I'm going to click in this blank area here, right click, go to grid lines. Now that we've got the baseline saved, and I'm going to pull down that line to change box, go to status date. I'm going to click solid line and I'm going to make it red. I'm going to click OK and nothing uh, happened. I don't see a status date uh, line there yet um, because I haven't put a status date. So what I'm going to do is put a status date in. So I've kind of said that if I have a status date, show me it and so when i pull that down it should show dark uh, solid line and red but let's pick a date that we want to update this to so i don't know somewhere somewhere in here if i zoom this out i can see it a little bit better uh, so again you can go behind my picture here there's a plus sign in the bottom right of your screen uh, you see that it says monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday here 
you can always squeeze this a little bit. I don't like it when it's that wide, when it does that to me uh, in days. You know, the quick way again, it, you could also go to the bottom right behind my picture, plus minus, but you could also go to view and you could say, show me it in days. So it says days, you know, it'll show weeks, it shows you different, uh, different scales of it. But days is here. I don't like the way it's um, spread out though. I'll double click on the time scale. That brings up the time scale box and then I usually will shrink this down. You could put this into one, 100% uh, would be better, but it's still not what I would like. Um, so what I usually do is I usually shrink it quite down. You can see how it's squeezing here. Usually you can get down to about 55%. Click OK and watch what happens. Boom. Now you can see a whole bunch of weeks in there, which is nice you customized it so that it fits your screen how you want. So there's all these little micro things that you can do. All right, so let's get ourselves a, a status date in here somewhere. So let's put a status date down maybe somewhere in here. So I'm gonna go to uh, project, the project tab. That's where we wanna put our status date. And we put it, move that over here. And I'm gonna put a status date of, let's see, I'm going to go back in time here a little bit. Uh, so we'll say, yeah, let's say February 7th. So let's say February 7th, click OK. And there's my status date over here. So I can see I have a status date there. And you know what? Maybe that's a little bit too far along for what I want to do. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to put it back to where I was originally going to put it, which was the 31st. OK. And January 31st. Uh, oh, now I've found that it has this problem sometimes, Microsoft Project. Depends on the version you have. Do you see how it went to 2023? I'm actually glad it did that. Uh, it sometimes gets a little bit finicky. I found that sometimes this box, it just gets a little bit finicky. Like, see how it put there? Let's see if it fixes it here. But if it doesn't, I've got another, another place that I'll show you how you can fix it when that happens. So I'm going to go to... Uh, February, yeah, I'm gonna go to January 31st. Okay, so I'll do that. Now it's saying 2022, let's see if it does it. No, see it didn't, it's still stuck with that. All right, so what I'm gonna do, because I like you to know that sometimes Microsoft Project, it does do a little bit of quirky things. It depends on the version that you have. If it's an older version, uh, like 2013, 2010, 2016, tends to do more than the more current version. Uh, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna slide uh, to where it says project. I'm gonna go to project information uh, and I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna put it back here to um, January 31st, let's see, let's get this. So we've got January 31st, 2022. This one I think I'll keep it. See, the, does it find there, but it sometimes gets a little bit awkward for you. But the nice thing is, if that ever happens, there's always these little workarounds. When you know how to do something more than one way, you don't get frustrated. Something like that could cause a lot of frustration with somebody if, it, if they didn't know um, that it's not them, it's the program uh, acting a little bit funny. All right, so we did that update there and I'm glad that that occurred. Uh, so we've got that update right to here. So that means we're gonna update this schedule to this. And if you've seen my previous videos, you know that that's what I uh, do is I update the schedule to the status date. Status date is that point where you're updating it to. So you shouldn't be before it. How can you update something into the future? It'll let you, the program will, but reality is you should never be doing that. So this should have happened you know, in the recent past, like a couple of days ago, something like that, where it's fresh on your mind. Okay. So we go to a different screen to do the updates. We go to the tracking screen. So I'm gonna to go to the tracking screen over here and I'm going to update this. And I'm gonna update this fairly quickly uh, because uh, we've done this before in previous videos, but just for your benefit, insert column. And I'm gonna type D for duration. And I'm gonna make this a little bit, uh, take a little bit longer. So I. I like to insert this duration column in the screen. I just find it makes it a little bit easier for me to um, do that with. And so I just updated that. And you know what? I'm going to say that that task is now done. Now I could type 100% in there 
and a solid line should go through that to say it's done. Right. So now for this one, I'm going to say that it took five days and instead of typing the 100%, maybe I want to just click a box that says it's 100%, right? So I said that this is five days. I'm just going to click 100% and that'll mark it done. The other little trick I've shown you is that, you know, if this is just fairly simple, I've kept it, but on a bigger project, you know, you might have like 30, 40, 50, 100 activities that you're updating in a update period, like a one month period. Well, if you just update all the ones that are kind of messing things up on you, running a little bit late or early or those kind of things, and then it pushes because of the critical path, it pushes the other activities, Maybe you've got to update like 10 or 15 activities that were a little bit oddball during the month, but maybe the other 30 activities, now that they've adjusted, are pretty much what you want them to be. That's what the way they happen. Then the quick way to do that is just to click here, and that would select everything. Now, right now, I've only got one other activity that I have not updated, right? But if you had like 20 other activities, if I then, once I've clicked that and selected everything, click Mark on Track, it will update everything to the status date, to the left of the status date, and it won't update anything to the right. And it'll calculate, you know, if this is five days long, it'll calculate that you've done three of those five days and it'll put in the percentage for you, which makes saves you a lot of time that way. So you just click, go up here and you click mark on track and it updates it to there. And yeah, you did three of five days. Well, three fifths is the same as 60% complete. So that's why, it marked that up to date on that spot. It's not complete, but it is up to date on that track on the status date now. All right, so that's great. Uh, we can see now at this stage, now that we've updated it, we could go and we could check, well, how far behind schedule are we? So we click the square icon and we see we've got a variance. This is important for the next step, which is the revising and recovery of the schedule. We're two days behind. And cost wise, we're $2,400 more money. You know, I'm assuming that these other contract amounts didn't change, but because it took longer, our variable costs change. So our variable costs are things that we have by an hourly rate, if you recall. And so now we have a $2,000 variant, a $2,400 variance. And if we go back to our entry view, and remember square icon box, right click, go to the entry, and we pull to the right, we can see, oh, we've assigned the site super to the whole project and the project manager 50%, half their time to the project. Okay, so if we slide to the left and we go down here and we go to the resource sheet, we can see we've got the site super, the PM, everybody there. But if I actually click on this square icon box, this is very helpful for updating and very helpful for recovery if you're doing cost loading. If you're not doing cost loading, it's not such a big deal. If you're just assigning resources without costs, it's not such a big deal. But if I wanna see where that money is changing, I can go to the cost screen. So I just click there, right click cost. And there it is, 1600 on the site super and 800 on the PM. And so I think we were two days behind schedule. I think each of them is getting paid $100 an hour. So the site super is working two days times eight, that's 16 hours times $100, 1600, right? They're there two days longer. The PM, $800 because they're only there half the time. So if it's two days longer and they're only there half the time, that would be the same as one day in cost. Eight hours times $100, $800, All right? And these are how much has been spent up to this point, up to the status date. It's calculating their pay up to the status date. And so then this plus this should be giving you that, right? Your current updated cost. And so you've spent this much, but you have this much remaining according to what the schedule says. Uh, so it's giving you that information, that difference. I don't think I went through that the last time. Um, so I'm gonna slide to the left now again. And just remember in the resource sheet, there's different views like the entry view, like I said, and the cost right now, these are the two that you really have to kind of worry about. And we see we've, where our variance is. All right, I'm gonna to slide to the left and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go um, to my Gantt chart. I was in the entry when I left, so that's showing me the entry still. Right, all right, 
Now, I would I saw the variance was two days. I would like to see the tracking Gantt. All right, so I'm going to slide to the left. I'm going to go to the tracking Gantt. And there is my tracking Gantt. And maybe I'll make my text a little bit bigger so you can see it a little bit better. So I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to go to View, uh, sorry, Format, Textiles, Format, Textiles. This is how you can make your, your text a little bit bigger on the tables if you like. There you go. Now it's a little bit bigger. Um, so you can see it maybe a little bit better. And you can always pull that vertical bar depending what you want to see. You can always squeeze the columns like you could in Excel if you want. You can delete columns from view, but it doesn't delete them from the program. So you've got a lot of choices here for your screen, what you want to show and what you want to do. Um, in, when I go to the tracking Gantt though, it does not put in the status date bar. Uh, you have to do that again if you want it. And then when you flip back and forth between the regular Gantt and the tracking Gantt, uh, you will see it. The tracking Gantt has a bottom bar and a top bar. The bottom bar represents the baseline, the planned amount. Remember when we set the baseline? And the top bar represents what's going on now. If they're perfectly in alignment, it means nothing changed, right? Like this is perfectly in alignment at the start, and then this changed and it pushed the top. So you can see what changed. This was delayed by a day. And then, so this was delayed by two days. One day because it started one day late and one day because it took one day longer. It's good to understand what's going on in the project. Also, the check marks indicate that these are done. This being dark and red up to this point and red beyond says it's a critical activity and it's updated up to this point. I would like to see the status date line here so I know where I'm at with my status date. So I right click, click grid lines pull this chart down, see the status date, make it a solid line, click on color again, go red, click OK, and there's my status date line. So there we go, we've got that in place here. All right, so that is our update complete. What I would wanna know is why we're two days late, right? So I've said this before, you would wanna put a note, you know, in task one, uh, so you double click on task one, you go in notes and you say uh, uh, late uh, due to uh, lack of resources. Click OK. That, whatever the reason is, you would put that in there. And then why was task two uh, late two days? Late two days, one day started uh, late due to task one, right? Uh, took one day longer, right? Took one day longer uh, due to material delay. At least you're, whatever it is, you're putting it down, right? And this becomes important later on. We'll talk about filling out a schedule narrative and updating uh, a little bit uh, with your recovery because you really want to document things pretty well. It depends on your project, right? Uh, but uh, in construction, we definitely want to uh, document things because things uh, end up costing us a lot of money. And if we're not careful, maybe we didn't cause these delays. Maybe it's a design error. Maybe the owner is uh, um, causing delays for us and it's taking a lot more time. Well, if it's costing us a lot more money as a result of that, then we'll want to make some claims and get some changes made to the overall project contract. Or perhaps somebody else is saying we're delaying them. Well, we want to make sure if that's the case, are we delaying them or is something else causing uh, at the root cause? And just to run your project more effectively, you want to know so you can fix it as you go forward. That's another big part of what we're looking at here. And so I'm going to try to bring some of these things together in some of my upcoming videos too on project management tips and how what's the best way of collaborating and engaging to save time. Uh, there's a lot of changes going on in, in the field uh, and in all kinds of project management practices, whether you're in IT or whether you're in construction, uh, all kinds of differences with lean construction methodology, agile and scrum in IT, and that's spreading to construction as well. So there's a lot of uh, things that are ch have been changing over the past uh, while in project management, which makes it so much fun. All right, so we're delayed two days. Now, 
I went through a bunch of file naming protocols, like how to name your files and that. So I would save this and I would call it update at this point. And I would use one of my file saving protocols. I'm not gonna get it that, into that in this video, uh, but I would definitely save it and include the date that this is the date I'm updating it. And that would be my update done, all right? And in the previous videos, I've said, okay, so we've got here, I usually use a drawing tool to illustrate this uh, from the right here on the format tab. We've done the update. That's everything in the past, right? So whatever we've updated in the past, now what we're gonna do is we're going to recover or revise the schedule. So I would rename this file because this file, this is gonna be our recovery or our revised file. And some people get touchy whether you call it revised or recovery, but basically we're trying to get the time back to zero, all right? We're trying to get the time back to zero. We've got a client that they wanna finish at the original finish date. Okay, so then we've gotta look along the critical path. It doesn't do us any good to shorten these activities when you're trying to get the time back. This is the one we've gotta shorten, right? And this one uh, looks like it's got a little bit that we could shorten it to get it back on track. Uh, just to show you uh, with uh, this, we can see uh, where we've got float. Now I've shown you this in one of the earlier videos. Click the square icon, right click, and you can go to schedule. You can see which activities have float and how much float they have. For example, this activity has a lot of float. Uh, this activity, obviously, it's got no float because it's on the critical path. So if we shorten this, this will get us our time back. Shortening this activity does nothing for us here. Like shortening this activity doesn't really help us. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I go back to square icon box, again, I was in the schedule just so I could see the total slack, same as float, slack float. That's our main one that we're looking at that's affecting the project. And so that's basically what we have with 11 days and two days. And these are all critical with the zero. These ones are done, so they don't, if it's done, it's done. There's no more critical path if it's done. Uh, it's not gonna move or adjust. But let's go back and take a look at the variant screen. Uh, so we've got two days here. So usually what I like to do is in the variant screen as well, I think I did this in the tracking screen, insert the duration column. So I click on the top, right click my mouse while I'm on the top, go insert column, type D for duration. Type D for duration, click that. And so what I'm saying is you really want to shorten this, right? Not on blue ones. Blue ones, they're not gonna save you time, right? Like I could, if I got this down to four days, you, you think that's gonna save me time? It doesn't move anything except this, right? The critical path, the finish date, it's all the same. It didn't help anything shortening that to four days. If I want to actually get this project back on track, I have to look along the critical path. So I, if I could get this done now in eight days instead of 10 days, well, how, what does that mean? Well, it might mean you're going to work a weekend, right? So that might that might be the case. You could create a calendar and have this activity uh, work on the weekend if you wanted to, a special calendar, a weekend calendar if you wanted to. Uh, you could say you're going to add some extra resources to this activity to get that time back. You know, you're going to have uh, more, if it was plumbing or something like that, you're going to add more resources to it. So it just depends what you're going to do to shorten that activity. In this particular case, I'm just going to shorten it out. And actually, let's take a look, because it depends what we've added to this activity. So let's take a look at the entry screen. What have we added? So we've added laborers here, right? So we've added laborers here. Now, if I just shorten this, that, that would be that uh, this is going to change uh, the price on this, right? So you got to kind of think about that too, if you're doing cost loading. You know, if I say, oh, the laborers, they're going to work harder and that's going to shorten the time and I'm not paying them any extra, that's going to save one heck of a lot of money because it'll get this back in alignment and it will make this cheaper. So what I'm saying is if I just went eight days, 
right? Now we're back on track. So you see how these are lined up? You see how this became critical because it's the same length of time, but we're back on track, right? I bet you we're, at, I, I'm thinking that we should be even cheaper than the original baseline cost. So if I go over here and I go to cost, uh, see we're cheaper. Well, that's because the laborers are cheaper, right? Because now we're saying it's only gonna take them uh, eight days instead of 10 days. So that's two days, uh, which is working out to $1,280. How is that working? So we had $80 an hour. We were playing the laborers, right? So eight times 80 is $640. And if we double $640, that'll give us 1280. Okay, that's great, but is that true? It's only true if somehow the laborers worked harder during that time period, right? So that's not likely. So what do you do about that? Well, maybe you're planning to have shortened it, but bring in two extra, or bring in an extra labor for maybe the Friday and Saturday. So you wanna add eight hours of labor to Friday and eight hours of labor to Monday, let's say. Um, that would be one way. Another way could be that you set up the calendar so that you work two uh, Saturdays and the laborers work then, but then maybe if they're working the two Saturdays, maybe you've got to pay them overtime. Um, that would cost more money instead of less money. So but let's see what we could do with that. All right, and I don't think I've shown you this before in a previous video. So if we slide to the left, we right click, we go down to where it says resource usage. And this is task five we're talking about here, right? Task five, so resource usage. So we see the laborers, they're assigned to task five and that's where our problem is. And I said that Friday and Monday, as an example, we're gonna have them work uh, an extra, not the, the same laborers, we're gonna bring an extra labor in. And so that'll give us 16 hours on the Friday and 16 hours on the Monday. So essentially two extra days of work. Um, from that. So we're editing that particular line item uh, out and it'll give us a little notification over here that that assignment has been edited because you've got some unique things going on there. Uh, I'm going to slide to the left. So I'm in the resource usage right now and I'm going to go back up and see what kind of impact that's had on my costs. And if, I, if, if my calculations are right in my head, that should be zeroed out here. So now I don't have any variance. Uh, I was able to pull that time back to get that fixed up. Uh, this is now the overall project where we had a variable cost with the PM and the site super. They're there less time, so now we have no variance uh, there. If I go to my tracking Gantt screen here that we were in before um, to take a look at it, so I'm there. Uh, we should see that this is all in alignment. And if we go to our variance screen, because it's in alignment, it's gonna say zero variance, start variance, finish variance, that's gonna be the same. So we've just now adjusted this to get it back on track. We've done these steps to pull it back and get it back on track. And that's what I actually, I'll tell you that in another uh, video that I'm gonna shoot uh, coming up on my PM tips is the direct method. We detect along the critical path. We look sooner rather than later to try to fix it. So immediate. Uh, we try to uh, look for the no or low cost solution. That really didn't cost us anything extra. Uh, we had to reschedule some of our labors and manipulate the time a little bit to get it back to zero. We experimented playing around with different things, looking at the cost, looking at the variance, and now we're back on schedule. And of course, we would save this using the file naming protocols uh, that I've discussed in the previous video. And you can, again, check in the description below uh, that you'll find those previous videos or on my playlist. And uh, that will give you a description of how to save the files. Because now I would call this file that it is recovery file. We're back on track. And then this becomes the new schedule, the new master schedule we're following. We keep the baseline built into it, but now we've got a new plan going forward. And you know what? Stuff's going to change again. And we'll talk about that more in upcoming videos. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of insight of why we're updating so we can see the delays looking at the delays, keeping in mind costs, 
keeping in mind different things to get the time back. You can shorten time frames, you can create special calendars, or you can do what I did with uh, the adding on the resource usage, extra hours if it's a variable cost. Uh, so you can bring an extra resource in to shorten that time. It's not shortening the amount of hours uh, or the cost on that. And sometimes it may even increase it depending on what you need to do, but it is giving you me different methods of recovering the time. And that's what this is all about. So I'm Tom Stevenson wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.